forecast first, sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, good evening to you. Temperatures today quite a bit warmer, still pretty muggy out there tonight. It's still 80 degrees in Lincoln, 78 in Decatur, 75 in Champaign. As the kids go out to the bus stop in the morning, things look okay. We're talking about 61 the way to school and then the way home. Much cooler readings in the mid 70s. But before we get there, We've got a few storms that may develop here. We've already got a couple of them here in the portions of Ford and Iroquois County. Nice little cell there that uh, developed just south and west of Watsika. Another one coming into the Gibson City area right now. Small chance for some severe weather. We'll show you that when we come back. WCA3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. It was a terrifying sight as an SUV came crashing down toward one interstate. The video you have to see. We've had to borrow a lot of money over the years. And it's adding up for Illinois why it's still in the hole after raising taxes. Marijuana is already set to be legal for next year, but one city has a plan of making a little extra money off of it. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. We're looking for it and getting prepared now. It's crunch time as cities have to decide within months whether they'll allow the sale of marijuana. This city took a big step ahead of the pack. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Tonight, Urbana became one of the first cities in the state to approve a sales tax on recreational marijuana. It becomes legal in Illinois at the start of next year. Tonight was the first of several more votes in store for Urbana and every other city across the state before the law can be implemented. WCI 3's Emily Braun is live in Urbana for us tonight. So, Emily... Urbana voted on this tax, but did not specifically vote on allowing sales in the city in general. And they won't, Jessica. And that's because cities don't have to bring this for a vote unless they choose to opt out. Or in other words, if they don't want to allow the sales within of marijuana within their boundaries. But Urbana is 100% on board with allowing sales. So next year, you can buy and smoke marijuana in Urbana city limits, and you'll pay a 3% tax if you bought it here. There's already a marijuana dispensary in town, New Med. The owner told us since he already sells medical marijuana, he is planning on selling recreational marijuana once this law goes into effect. And Mayor Diane Marlin told us she thinks this entire concept is a win-win. It's going to be interesting. I think it will be very busy, um, but I also think that uh, we're looking for it and getting prepared now. We are in, and we um, the tax tonight is um, part of that process. So yes, we're in. The tax is expected to bring in a few hundred thousand dollars for the city of Urbana. That will go toward the city's general fund. And Marlin says it will help whittle down the rest of the structural budget deficit that she's been working on getting rid of the past several years. Now, as for what's next, there's still a lot that each city and the state has to work through in the coming months. By the end of this year, cities have to decide on logistics like where people can and cannot use marijuana. But Mayor Marlin told us that cities only have until the end of this month to decide whether or not they'll impose a tax on sales. Live in Urbana, Emily Braun, WCI3, your local news leader. All right, Emily, thank you for that update. Over in Vermilion County, Danville will decide if it wants to allow recreational marijuana in just a couple of weeks. That's when they'll also vote on whether or not to include that 3% sales tax. Yeah, tonight people shared their opinions during a public hearing. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen is here. So, Jennifer, there were, of course, mixed opinions. Paul, there were. A couple dozen people came to the meeting. Some were in favor. Others were strongly against the idea. And while nothing was voted on tonight, this discussion will lead up to a decision that could have a lasting impact on Danville's future. One after another, people stood in front of the Danville City Council to give their thoughts on allowing recreational marijuana to be sold in the city. They don't say pothead for nothing. And I think everyone in this room knows that <coughs> marijuana has been wrong in the past. It will provide a previously unavailable <coughs> source of revenue to the city. 
it can provide jobs. There was an array of opinions by several people with different perspectives on the drug. Cities in Illinois are faced with the choice of allowing the sale after it becomes legal on January 1st. The mayor says the possible 3% sales tax revenue sounds enticing and could bring in extra money to make much needed improvements. You know, we need a lot of improvements in terms of roads, drainage projects. Uh, we were struggling to buy police cars. We had to take out a loan to buy a fire truck. Linda Jones had a different take and doesn't want money to be the driving force behind the decision. If greed and money is what you decide on, then you will definitely have marijuana in Danville. Cindy Barrett had the opposite opinion and believes this could be a benefit in the city. We have no idea where the future of this commodity may lead. It appears to be working out as a valuable option to help struggling towns. We should be part of it at its inception. The mayor remained neutral and wants to put this decision in the hands of the community in Danville. The mayor, what's your stance on it? I want to do what the people want. Um, it's, it's their city. Mayor Williams says the state is only allowing one recreational dispensary and craft grower in Vermilion County. So even if Danville votes to allow the sale of marijuana, there's no guarantee it will be granted to the city. Back to you. As with all things, only time will tell. Jennifer, thanks. Well, Illinois awarded its first licenses to sell recreational marijuana to five medical dispensaries on Thursday. Those are in Naperville, Mundelein, Joliet, Effingham, and Canton. Also at Danville City Council meeting, Mayor Williams announced they narrowed their choice of casino operators to two. The casino would be built on land off Lynch Road, south of I-74. Of the two applicants, the city plans to make a recommendation for the operating partner at the next council meeting. The application from a bidder for the casino is due to the state gaming board October 28th. We have an update from 5 o'clock. Springfield City Council voted tonight to ban vaping in public spaces. This ordinance applies to all the same places where it was already illegal to smoke cigarettes. That includes restaurants, bars, and stores. This ordinance was proposed after a statewide ban failed to make it through the Capitol earlier this year. Three people are expected to be okay after a woman drove her Jeep off an unfinished bridge and onto the interstate. Police say she drove through the construction site at the Bradley Avenue Bridge in Champaign and fell onto 57. Crews are working on the bridge and right now you can see there's nothing connecting the road to the other side. This woman went past the barricades, drove more than a thousand feet and tumbled over the edge. This camera caught it all. That concrete barricade kept the vehicle from slamming into another that was on the interstate. Police say charges are pending. About one mile from that crash, there was another wreck, this one deadly. It happened near the intersection of Staley and Cardinal Roads. People who saw it happen say the car dropped off of Staley and into a soybean field. It drove through the field, then hit a set of train tracks. The driver died at the scene. The coroner hasn't released a name. A U of I student is charged with disorderly conduct and a hate crime. He's accused of hanging a noose in a dorm elevator. Investigators say Andrew Smith found the rope in an elevator of Allen Hall, tied it into a noose and hung it. A witness says Smith found the rope and said he heard stories about ghosts in the residence halls. She warned Smith not to do it, but says he didn't listen. Investigators say Smith didn't think the noose was, quote, serious enough to be reported. It was long awaited and long overdue, but the state's yearly fiscal report card is now out. It's from fiscal year 2018, and it's more than a year late. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell dug into the details to learn more. So, Mark, what did you find? Jessica, good evening. It was more than a year late, and the findings in it weren't exactly great. We are paying down our, our debt, our stack of unpaid bills, but largely because we're borrowing money to do that and, and to eat into that stack of debt. There's also the deficit, which is different, and we're seeing that even though the state raised the income tax in 2017, that deficit is getting even larger. This is the state's comprehensive annual financial report. It tells you what the financial... Um, health of the state of Illinois is. Comptroller Susanna Mendoza's office released the state's annual fiscal report card after Auditor General Frank Montino's office put the finishing touches on several state audits. One big takeaway, a ballooning deficit. Ours had a um, decline of about $6.4 billion. This report reviewed the first fiscal year after the 2017 income tax hike from 3.75% up to 4.95 where it is today. How are we taking in more money but still losing money? Okay. That's a great question that you've asked. The Auditor General used to be a House Democrat. 
He says state lawmakers, including his former colleagues, need to find ways to cut spending. The increase in the deficit shows there's more work to do in reducing spending while incomes and revenues rise. In the meantime, decisions will have to be made on, on borrowing that will allow us to get, get more stable. We've had to borrow a lot of money over the years. Political science expert Ron Michelson tells me he understands why Illinois borrowed money to pay down debt at a lower interest rate, but said we should never have been in that position in the first place. We've been borrowing money to pay general operating expenses. That's never a good thing. Generally, you use bonds for capital projects. You use bonds for roads and bridges and schools and buildings. You don't use bonds to pay the bills. Now, Governor Pritzker is pushing forward to raise billions more in taxes in a 2020 ballot initiative, asking voters to approve a graduated income tax. We cannot count on the passage of a progressive income tax, which the proponents say is going to improve our fiscal situation. We're not sure that's going to happen. We're not sure the voters are going to approve that. Governor Pritzker's push for a progressive income tax is a big gamble, but will it pay off? It seems it will face opposition even from within his own party, as just last week, Chicago's mayor, Lori Lightfoot, a Democrat, told the Chicago Sun-Times, quote, we can't keep taxing the hell out of the people who make substantial incomes, a direct quote, that's not right, that's not fair, and it's not going to work. It seems if Illinois is going to find its way to stronger fiscal footing, there's still a big fight ahead. Jessica? Very interesting. All right, Mark, thank you so much. New for you tonight, a champagne business is closing after almost 20 years. Great Harvest Bread Company will be closing on Saturday. The current owner tried to sell it, but nothing came through. A sign on the door said the following, quote, We've loved baking for you. Thanks for making us a part of your family, a part of your business, and a part of your community events. We will all miss you. Want to catch the Bears season opener this week? We have a tailgate experience for you, unlike any other. Plus, while many are evacuating out of Dorian's path, others are heading right for it instead. And one Illinois football player isn't letting the past weigh on him how he shined in the Illini's first game.